So good news and bad in the X-Men universe. Let us get to the good. And we'll get to the maybe not good and then possibly really, really bad. So the good news that X-Men 97 overall is a major triumph. And again, for most fans and most critics, has succeeded. There is a bit of a bad news, but even there, it's a question mark. And also great, incredible news that Deadpool and Wolverine are off to an astonishing start. And they've been kind enough to share a really joking little teaser. Again, this is clearly not really part of the film. They're just making fun of movie culture. So we're going to listen to that. And then I'll do my analysis of X Manos. It's going to vibrate. Oh my God. <laughs> yes, I think it's going to. Listen, just um, turn your phones off or put them on silent. You know, whatever you prefer. I'm going to, I'm going to take his. Really have not encountered the phone thing too much in theaters. I think maybe in a blue moon. So I don't know. Maybe I'm just lucky. I just never had people like be constantly on the phone, like distracting me. So, and I went to Oppenheimer. That was packed. Most people were uh, respectful. Multiverse of Madness, also packed theater. Pretty respectful again. So I I've been lucky, I guess. But yeah, they were making fun of people just, lady, turn off the freaking phone. I'm going to take out my claws. So that's a little funny. So pre-sales for Deadpool and Wolverine are astonishingly high. Now, trying to get an analytic reading of this, like a real factual data point of view, is a little hard. It's an R-rated movie. R-rated movies are now pretty rare. And the Fandango thing that is more recent, back in the day, you actually have to go to theaters to pay for them. And again, there are false signs. For instance, Taylor Swift, it looked like that was going to be a behemoth, and it did do pretty well. I like Taylor. I don't hate Taylor. I'm pro-Taylor. But people were overestimating how big that film was based on the pre-sales, and obviously it was the Swifties. Her fans were just going crazy. They bought up the early tickets, but it did fine, but it wasn't like this massive blockbuster. But Deadpool and Wolverine does seem to have genuine traction. It's not just the hardcore MCU people or the MCU shows or, or people like me who read French cinema books and, you know, whatever philosophize about cinematics and Kubricks. It, it is like normal people do seem genuinely excited. It does look like it'll be a genuine hit on their hands. There have not really been that many hits this year. There have been respectable, decent films like Dune Part 2. I had issues with critically, but box office wise, it actually did fairly well, but even it did not crack a billion dollars. It's just been very tough for films to just reach that billion dollar sweet spot that used to be fairly normal for the big budget films. We'll wait and see if uh, Deadpool and Wolverine can destroy that trend and, and get back to billion dollar land. But now let's deal with the bad, which is that X-Men 97 in terms of ratings might not be the winner. Now, we don't know yet. We have to wait for the official Nielsen ratings, and those take a little bit of time to really get going. So there's speculation that there was a very low viewership. I, I really don't care. I mean, I enjoyed it. That's really well all that matters. But yes, it's a reality now. We have piracy. You don't have to see it through official channels. Also, people may just see things once, never see it again. That's how it works. So viewing habits have changed. So maybe the ratings are not going to be what we think they are. I, I still think they're going to be respectful. We're getting season two, and hopefully that'll be successful enough. We'll get further seasons. I think they've set up a lot of intriguing things. The way they got there was, I think, a little shaky. But overall, if you're an X-Men fan, I think you're going to be very delighted. And extra bonus, apparently they're going to have a documentary called Assembled, and I'm very eager to look at that. Now, these behind-the-scenes documentaries have been hit or miss, like with Game of Thrones. I was like, oh, we're not doing a regular episode. Okay, fine. It just made everything look a lot worse. It made them come off as like really privileged brats. And they were just not really paying attention. They were just getting lazy. And Benioff and Weiss, I know people are like trying to do this revisionism. They're really nice, good people. No, I mean, they're just a bunch of drunken idiots. And they just sound so strange and full of themselves. And you can visually see the actors are really puzzled or just like, what? I'm getting killed off that way? So, yeah, sometimes the behind-the-scenes documentaries, which are supposed to be like this grand finale, just show like, wow, you guys really don't know what the hell you're doing. Hopefully Assembled will be a little better than that. I mean, I don't expect it to have the nosedive that Game of Thrones did, but, you know, Game of Thrones did happen. So it's a jungle out there. But at this point, looks like the X-Men universe is slowly reconstructing itself. 
Will it be at the uh, height of its powers, like the early 90s or even the late 90s and early 2000s? Probably not, but you can hope. 